Most Hold'em players hate getting two jacks because they feel as though they're unlucky with them. Well, chances are, it isn't that they're unlucky with the hand, but rather they're overvaluing the hand and misplaying it. In Hold'em, the best hand you can get is aces, followed by kings, queens, and then jacks. However, there's a significant difference between the strength of the jacks and the queens. With the queens, there's only two overcards. However, with jacks, there's three overcards that get hit on the flop, which makes the hand difficult to play, as that's going to happen quite often. When one of the three overcards doesn't hit, well then, you have a whole new set of worries with a potentially coordinated board, like 4-5-7, 3-4-5, and 6-7-8. If someone is playing a little pair, slow playing a bigger pair, or was lucky enough to have flopped a straight, you're just doomed. Pocket jacks are the one hand that seemed too strong to fold, yet not strong enough to call if there's too much action ahead of you. If you're playing a structured limit hold'em game, the, the impact isn't as severe, but in a game of no limit hold'em, where your entire bankroll is in jeopardy, a hand like jacks is one that you want to play very carefully. In fact, it's not all that difficult to think of situations where you should just fold the jacks before the flop. Think about it for a second. Let's say an early position player raises and then a very tight player re-raises all in right behind. Now, as you look down at your pair, the fourth best pair on the deck, you have to ask yourself, what in the world could they have? Well, for one, they could both have a hand like ace-king, in which case you'd be getting good odds on your money, but more often than not, one of those two players will be sitting there with a pair bigger than yours. <clears throat> it's not a stretch to imagine that the first player might have a hand like ace-queen and the all-in raiser would be sitting with a pair of kings in the hole. <clears throat> if that very real possibility is out there, you'd be a 4-1 to one underdog to win the pot, and that's just not a good thing. There are countless dilemmas you'll face with a pair of jacks, and that's the reason so many people hate the hand. Frankly, unless a jack hits the flop, you'll never feel too safe. Now, that's not to say, though, that you should just fold on the flop if you don't catch a jack. Not at all. It's a good idea to try and protect your hand on the flop with a good size bet, but if somebody does call, you'd better be willing to abort mission and fast. Say a flop comes ace-9-4, for example. This might be a good time to make one stab at the flop trying to gauge information about your opponent's hand. If he calls you or raises you in this spot, what do you think he might have? Chances are he has that ace, which would give you only a 7% chance of winning the pot. Now, if the flop comes down 9-6 deuce, well, that is a tough, tough situation to consider folding. The only playable hand that would have you beat in this situation would be pocket deuces, sixes, nines, of course, queens, kings, and aces. You still want to bet aggressively on this flop with your pair of jacks, but if your opponent does raise you, wow, I mean, that's just a really tough decision. The key here, as with most poker problems, is sizing up your opponent. If you had aces, kings, or queens, would he have raised big before the flop? Is he the type of player that would call with small pairs before the flop? When he flops three of a kind, does he usually bet it aggressively or play it slow to suck more people in? In the end, it'll be a judgment call that you're going to have to make. Playing jacks makes for some of the toughest decisions you'll ever make, but hey, whoever said this game would be easy.